Hello everybody, welcome to this massive open online course on uh, solid fluid operations. So as we are talking about that uh, nanoparticle systems and uh, also how that nanoparticles are defined and uh, uh, what are the applications of nanoparticles, what are the basic features of nanoparticles, how that nanoparticles can be you know uh, synthesized. So in the previous lecture we have uh, discussed all those things. So in this lecture we will try to uh, understand the brief about of synthesis of nanoparticles by physical methods. As we have discussed that there are two uh, basic methods by which you can uh, synthesis uh, you can uh, uh, you know make uh, this uh, nanoparticles. Uh, one is called that top down uh, method or it is called that physical method. Another is, is uh, bottom up method which is called chemical method. In the case of top down method is basically it is a physical way by which that particles you can break into a finer one and then you can uh, break further to make these nanoparticles. And uh, this is uh, actually the method by which you need not to uh, have uh, chemical reactions there. So in that case you can uh, synthesize that you know nanoparticles uh, just by you know mechanical action. So that mechanical action earlier we have discussed that size reduction method there are uh, you know different types of mechanical devices based on which you can uh, reduce the size of the particles. One of uh, them is uh, called milling. So you can use that uh, milling process to uh, reduce the size of the particles uh, from its conventional size to its micro and also to nano size. And millings are there are different types of millings there will be said I think we have discussed earlier the some will be ball mill uh, is there. Uh, so ball mill can be used to uh, reduce that size of that uh, you know particle from uh, you know that very uh, fine to that uh, nano uh, size. Also other methods are available uh, it is called chemical vapor deposition also laser ablation method even spark ablation method. These are physical methods here uh, it is also named as you know that dry production method. Another method uh, or it is called that approach also it is called bottom up where you will see that some atomic uh, sized materials uh, that will be you know converted into the eventual nanoparticles by just nucleation of that atomic structure or atomic uh, sized materials and it depends on that material which is being generated. And also it is called that weight uh, production method. So there will be certain chemical reaction uh, and also you will see that change of that materials are just uh, in presence of other chemicals and uh, it will give you that nano size particles just by different uh, you know changes of phases. It's some common methods like this uh, Tarkevich method even uh, citrate reduction method, gas phase synthesis uh, also uh, block copolymer synthesis method even sometimes it is happened uh, like microbial synthesis method. So these are uh, two uh, different approaches or method you can say or technique you can say by which you can synthesize uh, this uh, nanoparticles. And as a physical method you can say that we are converting that materials uh, just by mechanical action from its fine size to that nano size and for that uh, there will be you know that uh, different uh, you know also techniques uh, for getting this mechanically of this size reduction that may be you know that some will be mechanical where uh, ball milling, mechanochemical method, severe plastic deformation method, cryo milling method and some will be you will see that gas phase uh, synthesis uh, in that case uh, inert gas condensation, aerosol spray pyrolysis, combustion flame synthesis, uh, plasma spray or a thermal spray method, chemical vapor deposition, chemical vapor condensation, evaporation techniques, atmospheric pressure electric discharge method. So these are called gas phase synthesis method and others methods also uh, sometimes it is seen uh, or nowadays uh, being done for this uh, you know nanoparticle synthesis like you know cryo milling uh, or cryo melting uh, process, laser pyrolysis process, reactive plasma arc evaporation method, microwave plasma process like uh, uh, epitaxial uh, growth, rapid uh, quenching solidification method, 
ion beam sputtering method, cell propagating high temperature synthesis, even hydrogen uh, reduction method. So, these are uh, actually broadly classified different you know physical methods by which you can synthesize uh, this you know nanoparticles. So, among those methods uh, we will not discuss here all the methods, but uh, you can follow some you know standard textbook that will be actually uh, given here in this lecture the textbook which is to be followed. And uh, as per that you know textbook to refer that you can go through that. But some of the techniques, one or two techniques that we will discuss here in this lecture, uh, which will be very useful for you. In this case, uh, let us discuss that ball milling method by which you can, you know, synthesize that uh, nanoparticles. So, in this case, reactant powder generally taken or uh, then it will be introduced typically in a sealed uh, vial as shown in this, you know, picture with, uh, you know, hardened steel uh, coated balls. In this case, the milling is performed by shaking and violent uh, agitation as shown in the picture it is as an animation it is uh, shown that you know how that you know powder of that you know around 50 micrometer particle is added uh, with the, in the in the uh, vial uh, where that some solid uh, steel uh, ball is uh, there. And whenever that vial will be rotating there will be a formation of you know violent agitation and this vial uh, will be filled with sometimes gas that will be uh, inert gas that will you know uh, enhance that agitation inside the uh, vial. And also the powder uh, then uh, after uh, uh, you know uh, violent agitation it will be uh, splitted and exposed highly reactive surfaces uh, between those you know powder and you know uh, uh, steel ball and the uh, severe plastic deformation happens during this uh, violent uh, you know agitation which result to uh, you know nanometer scale structure of the powder. So, this is the basic way by which you can you know convert this you know uh, micrometer size of particles to the nano size particles. Also uh, this production of nanoparticles by using this ball milling sometimes involve a significant amount of you know solvent like water solvent other solvent like uh, normal butyl acetate acetone ethyl acetate etc during particle size reduction and in this case uh, why this you know solvent to be added this addition of this solvent inside the mill uh, can moderate the mechanical shock and minimize the uh, you know amorphization of the material like if you are you know converting that you know graphite nanoparticles then in that case it is required some you know solvent to be added and also uh, reagent. Vibratory uh, mill has been used to you know synthesize metal uh, sometimes you know they are like you know uh, lead, zinc, uh, cadmium, uh, copper like this uh, nanoparticles. So, in this, in this case nano crystal and particle on a large scale of uh, you know uh, that uh, lead uh, zinc or cadmium or copper this type of uh, as an uh, example uh, at room temperature can be you know uh, produced. Also uh, in this case uh, you will see that uh, uh, this techniques is used for the synthesis of alloys even nano composites. Uh, you will see that uh, some other uh, intermetallic materials like titanium, aluminum uh, you know alloys to get its nanoparticles even iron carbon alloy nanoparticles uh, even uh, lead nanoparticles zinc nanoparticles magnesium uh, titanium even uh, carbon nanocomposites that can be uh, synthesized by this ball milling process. So, by you know when uh, you will see that uh, uh, solvent uh, to be used for this nanoparticle synthesis in that case it will be called as you know wet uh, you know uh, process of ball milling that is a wet ball milling process. Also sometimes in cryogenic temperature uh, that means cryo temperature means very uh, low temperature uh, by this cryogenic liquid medium in a ball mill this uh, you know nanoparticles can be synthesized and in that case it will be called as cryo milling. Now let us uh, you know have an example of uh, this uh, production of nanoparticle okay from eggshell by wet ball milling. Here you will see that uh, if we use some eggshell membrane 
okay then we can have some nanopart nanoparticle from this eggshell membrane so the eggshell uh, membrane is to be first uh, separated okay here step by step method is given the eggshell is to be washed with distilled water then dried in a drying oven at around 70 degrees celsius for 3 hours okay for 3 hours and uh, then uh, it will be pulverized in a grinder now the crude eggshell powder is then boiled at 0 0.03 mole per liter of uh, hydrochloric acid for 10 minutes and then uh, subsequently the mixer is to be cooled down and uh, it is to be placed in a distilled water and also then it is to be stirred for uh, 15 minutes and then it will be allowed to stand for 30 minutes to remove the floating eggshell membrane there and subsequently that uh, eggshell powder is to be dried at uh, 70 degrees celsius for 3 hours after you know suction of filtration suction filtration that is why filtration that you have to suck it and uh, collected for analysis after uh, it is uh, sheaved through 75 micrometer mesh here uh, 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 you know uh, uh, shown in the picture uh, where you can do this you know process let us discuss in uh, more details here step by step the schematic representation of this overall experimental procedure is given here if you take eggshell after that you have to you know clean it with uh, distilled water and then uh, you have to separate that uh, eggshell membrane after that you have to dry it around 70 degrees celsius then you have to crush it to make it more finer one and then you have to add some uh, you know hydrochloric acid around your concentration 0 0.03 mole per liter for 10 minutes you have to boil it after that you have to stir it uh, with deionized water uh, for 15 minutes and then uh, standing for 30 minutes then you have to filter it after filtering you have to pass it through 75 uh, mesh sheep uh, and then you have to allow it through that you know wet ball milling process where uh, 75 milliliter per 100 uh, milliliter of ethanol can be used as a you know solvent you know uh, there and then uh, at a certain process parameter that you have to do this you know uh, operation of this milling and then after uh, milling you will get that nano size particles and uh, after that you have to characterize it means characterization uh, uh, here uh, you can identify what will be the size of that uh, you know nano particles even uh, uh, what will be the strength of what will be the surface area per gram uh, of that nano particles uh, these are the characteristics that you can even also you can uh, have what will be the you know what are the moisture contents is there any amorphous or other type of materials there it is formed that you can you know characterize it by different you know equipment also you have to measure uh, that zeta potential even other you know particle size distribution there by different equipment also what are the chemical compounds are there you can uh, also uh, you know identify by you know that xrf or ftir method there uh, so uh, these are the characterization techniques uh, by which you can then characterize so basic objective is to here uh, to synthesize the uh, nanoparticle by this uh, you know wet uh, milling uh, method uh, in this case we have taken uh, eggshell from which you can uh, synthesize that you know nanoparticle now typical uh, operational parameters for this operation milling time can be uh, typically 2 to 14 hours rotational speed will be you know 300 to 500 rpm ball to powder ratio that can be allowed here 4 is to 1 to 8 is to 1 solid to liquid ratio uh, within a range of 1 is to 2 to 1 is to 6 and filling ratio 10 to 40 percent in this case the ground nano eggshell powder suspension is taken out of the milling jar after grinding according to the prescribed operational parameters so in this way you can synthesize nanoparticles then another technique is called gas phase synthesis there are also different techniques available by which you can get uh, this nanoparticles 
first category is that to fabricate nanoparticles. So, the first category consists of solid precursor used in like inert gas condensation, laser ablation, spark discharge, these are the methods, these are called first category in this case some solid precursor to be used there. Another category is called uh, uh, method where uh, you will see the liquid and vapor precursor uh, will be required in conjunction with that combustion flame synthesis spray and laser pyrolysis uh, and also uh, flame pyrolysis it is called. Also you will see that plasma processing even uh, evaporation techniques also uh, used to you know synthesize that nanoparticles. So, basically these two categories of this gas phase synthesis uh, uh, method uh, by which you can get that nanoparticles. Now, what is that inert gas condensation? Uh, let us discuss here that uh, uh, one or two techniques of this inert uh, gas condensation here or uh, that gas phase synthesis. So, uh, they are uh, let us have this you know general you know introduction on this uh, inert gas condensation. In this case, uh, this method generally used to synthesize metallic compound and oxide nanoparticles like uh, manganese uh, nanoparticle, nickel uh, nanoparticles, iron and iron oxide nanoparticles and size controlled gold or palladium nanoparticles like this. And the evaporation is done by thermal evaporation techniques, laser evaporation techniques, sputtering, electric arc discharge and plasma heating method. And the first uh, step involved the evaporation of the material and the second is the rapid condensation of the evaporate material to favor the particle size and morphology. So, inert gas condensation you will see that some uh, you know evaporation techniques will be required to evaporate that molecules and after that it will be depositing on a hot plate like that and then it will be condensed to deposit on that. So, here uh, this is the techniques. Uh, so, uh, the first step uh, is basically that you have to evaporate uh, the material and second is to rapid condensation will be done uh, of that evaporate material to favor that particle size and morphology. This is the main techniques here and in that case the inert gas is condensed in a condensation devices whose pressure uh, is uh, you, you know evacuated to fall down up to 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 torr using a diffusion pump. And after evacuation is done, inert gases like uh, helium, xenon and argon are leaked into that chamber with lower pressure of about 0 0.5 to 4 atmosphere with the subsequent first heating of chamber at constant temperature and inert gas pressure. So, at this point the particles with ultra fine sizes that are uh, you know formed in the inert gas phase are collected in a surface that is cooled by water. Okay. So, let us uh, have an example for that you know uh, how to you know synthesize a nanoparticle by this you know inert gas condensation. So, in this case you will see that uh, we can uh, synthesize some nanoparticles by this you know inert gas condensation here. In this case you will see that uh, experimental arrangement here as shown in the picture and in this uh, section you will see that nitrogen cylinder, resistance heating tube, furnace and vacuum pump team are required for this experimental facilities and you will see that the furnace included 3 heating chambers with total length of 1.2 meter. This is typically each chamber uh, deployed a thermocouple to detect that heating uh, temperature and uh, the vacuum pump team consists of a mechanical pump and an oil diffusion pump. A water cooling jacket is to be designed. Uh, in such way that at the end of that quartz tube to realize complete condensation of the metal vapor. And the uh, you know uh, uh, crucible also can be placed in the heating chamber which can be heated up to a around you know 12, uh, 1300 uh, you know uh, Kelvin by resistance furnace. So, this is the experimental you know facility by which you can do it. Now, let us uh, do uh, that you know synthesis of that nanoparticles by this inert gas condensation. In this case, we can prepare the zinc nanoparticles from that spent zinc manganese battery waste. So, in this case, the zinc uh, cathodes uh, from the battery loaded with a you know corundum crucible to be placed in the heating chamber initially and then uh, a 200 mesh stainless steel 
uh, net to be covered on the crucible to avoid that uh, spreading of residues and then the system is to be first evacuated to 1 pascal when the furnace will be cooled down then uh, nitrogen gas uh, that is of different pressure like uh, 1 100 1000 even 10000 pascal can be uh, can be can be you know flowed into that chamber and uh, after that the furnace to be you know heated uh, to the preset temperature with the heating rate of 10 kelvin per a minute and then when furnace will be cooled down the phase of that prepared products to be characterized by a different you know characterization uh, system like x-ray you know diffraction acm machine like this for instrument so this is the basic uh, techniques of that uh, nanoparticle synthesis by you know inert gas condensation okay uh, and then uh, uh, another method it is called that combustion flame synthesis this is also physical method by which you can convert this conventional size particles to the nano size particles in this case uh, you will see that some example uh, to uh, production of carbon black silica titania these are the materials uh, of nano size to be uh, produced uh, or can be produced and the combustion heat can uh, you know here activate a number uh, of reactions such as oxidation hydrolysis pyrolysis and reduction which can you know manipulated based on precursor used and the flame environment there so this is basically in a flame you will see that nanoparticles to be you know uh, uh, synthesized uh, just you know by its uh, you know some uh, pyrolysis hydrolysis and reduction reaction so this method basically widely uh, 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 this method widely used to synthesize small oxide particles from redox uh, oxides and uh, in this case uh, you will see that uh, whatever flame will be produced that flame heat will be used to initiate nucleation of both aerosol and non aerosol precursors sometimes this aerosol and non aerosol precursors to be used so initially that uh, you know flame uh, heat will be used to you know initiate that nucleation of both that aerosol and non aerosol uh, precursor and that precursor will consist of redox mixers like that and the reducing agent like fuel uh, is an organic compound such as urea citric acid or polyphenyl alcohol uh, like this and uh, the oxidizing agent also to be used which will be a metal salt such as nitrate and after ignition you will see that using an external source the precursor mixer that will burns via an exotherm uh, exothermic redox reaction to form the product and the presence of large volume of gas formed after the combustion induces disintegration of the large particles into nanoparticles here. So here basically that after combustion of that you know particles and during that combustion they are you know in presence of that you know reducing agent oxidizing agent this precursor in presence of that flame heat will be converted into a you know nanoparticles here also one example is uh, shown here uh, uh, for conversion or, or you can say that uh, synthesize of uh, titanium nanoparticles uh, by this combustion flame techniques Okay. In this case, there will be a, some methane uh, flame, uh, premixed methane flame it is called by which you can convert this you know uh, titania uh, uh, particles into its nano uh, size particle. So, in this case, uh, you know titania nanoparticles can be synthesized in the uh, premixed uh, flame by using titanium tetra iso uh, propoxide uh, material or chemicals as a titania uh, precursor. So here uh, this is called TTIP okay. So this uh, TTIP uh, will be used as a uh, precursor for this synthesis of titania uh, uh, nanoparticle. So this uh, TTIP uh, as a liquid it will be placed in a flask uh, here as shown in the picture okay which is to be connected with that gas carrying lines here as shown in the picture then uh, you know the ttp vapor is to be carried by that bubbling air through the liquid as shown in the uh, figure and uh, the premixed flame burner composed of two uh, you know parts it will be the bottom portion is in a divergent uh, shape to decrease that flow velocity and it is filled with small steel balls to you know encourage the mixing of methane and air 
so in presence of methane and air okay that you know uh, TTIP to be mixed initially after that the upper portion uh, you know is a stainless steel uh, tube with a diameter of 12 millimeter near the exit port of the burner here and uh, you will see that uh, uh, several layers of the steel wires the screen are also to be you know installed to ensure the uniformity of gas flow so here you will see that methane and air that will be mixed with that uh, TTIP uh, you know uh, precursor which will be sent to mix uh, with that TTIP uh, in presence of nitrogen atmosphere and after that uh, by check bulb you know uh, that will be allowed to, uh, to pass through that you know premixed burner. Uh, in this premix uh, premix burner uh, whenever that you know flame will be produced that you know premixed gases are to be then prepared by that air with the methane and hydrogen which are to be blended in a mixing chamber filled with small glass balls that we have discussed. And then before entering that burner, the combustible mixer is to be further mixed with the TTIP vapor that is carried here. It is uh, carried by an air stream in the other mixing chamber, which is also to be filled with glass balls. Then the synthesized titanium nanoparticles in the post flame region are to be then collected via deposition on a stainless steel plate, okay, which is inserted into the flame zone at different heights above the burner exit port here. And in this case you will see there will be uh, three you know consecutive way this you know uh, in the uh, you know flame this nanoparticles can be uh, produced here. So that will be this uh, first of all this precursor you know uh, nucleation uh, first of all you will see that here and then uh, nucleated uh, this you know uh, particles will be converted into you know, nanoparticles after its growth. Okay. So, here uh, this is the method by which you can simply get this you know uh, this nanoparticles of this titania uh, nanoparticles based on this you know uh, methane. Another method it is called chemical vapor deposition method. In this case the chemical vapor deposition method basically uh, a chemical reaction will be there. Uh, though in, it is coming as a under uh, physical uh, operation the substrate in this case will be used which is to be exposed to those precursor that decomposes on it and form the desired deposit. The vaporized precursor is uh, actually then inserted into a CVD reactor that is a chemical vapor deposition reactor and adsorbed onto a substance being placed at high temperature. And then molecules that uh, get adsorbed react with other molecules or uh, decompose to form that crystals. The homogeneous nucleation occurs in gas phase and heterogeneous nucleation happens in a substrate. And the reaction can be controlled to produce the nanoparticles of size ranging from 10 to 100 nanometer. The three steps in CVD method are reactants that will be transported first on the growth surface by boundary layer and then chemical reactions will be you know allowed to occur on the growth surface and after chemical reactions there will be some byproducts which will be produced by the gas phase reaction and that has to be removed from the surface. So, these are you know three steps to be followed for this you know chemical vapor deposition technique by which you can get that nanoparticles. Uh, let us uh, have an example for this also to synthesize molybdenum and tungsten uh, disulfide uh, nanoparticles by aerosol assisted uh, you know chemical vapor deposition. So, this can be you know carried out in a vertical tubular quartz reactor with an inner diameter of about 23 millimeter and uh, ammonium uh, thiomolybdenum here and ammonium thiotungsten here uh, uh, this uh, chemical formula is given here can be used as precursors and uh, from that precursors you will see some aerosol will be for, uh, you know formed and that aerosol of their solutions uh, in dimethyl uh, formamide can be generated using a piezoelectric nebulization which will be operated at a frequency of 2.4 megahertz typically. And then the reactor will be equipped with three you know resistive heaters. The first heater uh, will be used to evaporate that solvent from aerosol particles and the second heater is uh, used to heat that thiosols in the pyrolysis zone and the third heater 
maintains a thermal temperature of about 300 degrees Celsius in the deposition zone to avoid condensation of the solvent there. Let us uh, have this you know uh, uh, schematic diagram of this whole process here. You will see that uh, the piezoelectric nebulizer here it will be produced and due to this uh, piezoelectric uh, nebulizer by action of that you will see that precursor solution will produce that you know uh, vapor and vapor particles will be flowing out uh, and there will be a zone where it will be you know that uh, fluidized or you can say that pyrolyzed here at a certain temperature and after that it will be going through that and it will also uh, pass through another uh, heat exchanger to maintain a certain temperature here and after that it will be allowed to you know uh, deposit on that steel plate where it will be adsorbed here and it is also a hot plate there. So, in this hot plate you will see that the particles will be uh, deposited at a substrate and uh, then that substrate will be taken out uh, which will be as a uh, nanoparticles. So, in this case the experiments on that deposition of nanoparticles of that mixed solution is carried out at temperature at around 700 degrees Celsius and 900 degrees Celsius. That aerosol particles are transferred to the reactor by helium carrier gas that is supplied to the reactor at flow rate of about uh, 0.3 uh, you know liter per minute. The concentration of the precursor in the solution can be used as 0.005 mole uh, or molar. The you know values of that concentration ratio of that precursor in the solution can be you know taken as 0 to 1 typically. Then the uh, synthesized particles to be collected on the substrate here quartz placed in the reactor on the you know graduated substrate holder using an electrostatic uh, filter. So, basically we are having this uh, you know uh, method uh, brief method by which you can uh, synthesize. So, in this case uh, very interesting that what are the precursors to be used that you have to remember and also that aerosol of their solutions in that uh, chemicals that solutions like in uh, dimethyl uh, formamide uh, that can be generated using a piezoelectric nebulizer that will be operated with a certain uh, you know frequency. And then uh, that reactor uh, you have to heat it in uh, uh, 3 consecutive uh, you know sections uh, to get that you know temperature uh, at around 700 to 900 degrees Celsius and after that it will be you know taken uh, or deposited in a uh, steel hot plate uh, systems as a substrate and which will be collected as a nanoparticle. Here uh, uh, this uh, aerosol assisted uh, chemical vapor deposition is used to prepare that nanoparticles and is mostly used for thin film deposition on solid substrates, seed particles or simply material supports. Also this aerosol assisted uh, uh, chemical vapor deposition you know involves the use of uh, a starting uh, you know precursor solutions followed by its atomization. Using a carrier gas aerosols are formed from the precursor solution and afterward nanoparticles are obtained either by homogeneous reaction as free powder that is uh, flowing vaporization or, 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 or via heterogeneous reaction on a heated substrate. So, here uh, uh, this is the uh, you know schematic of different routes by which you can get that you know uh, nanoparticles by this aerosol uh, assisted you know chemical vapor deposition. So, uh, in this case uh, uh, you can uh, directly get that uh, from that precursor after uh, atomization and carrying uh, by this carrier gas and then uh, you know aerosol droplets to be transported to that you know uh, heating zone and after that evaporation. Uh, of that solvent uh, and that uh, will be transported to the uh, to a chamber and then uh, after you know uh, heterogeneous reaction by absorption on that heated uh, heated plate it will be you know deposited that will be getting as a heated substrate and that also can be taken as a you know uh, uh, nanoparticle here or you can uh, you know get it after heating uh, and uh, supplying that some reactive gases and vaporization through that vaporization you can get it that vaporization then vapor uh, it will be then nucleated via homogeneous reaction and then uh, after again homogeneous reaction you can get that you know powder products and that uh, as a substrate on the uh, you know hot plate. 
So in this way, you can synthesize that, you know, nanoparticles. Not only this particular nanoparticles to be produced, but uh, you can get other uh, different metals nanoparticles like rubidium, uh, platinum, even uh, tungsten nanoparticles, they are by this method. So uh, in this lecture, what uh, we have discussed that, what are the physical methods by which you can get that nanoparticles or you can synthesize that nanoparticles. Uh, out of which you can get some mechanical uh, method that is a very useful method and also widely used method where that there will be no chemical reaction. Whereas some other methods by chemical reaction like chemical vapor deposition uh, in presence of that you know uh, gas phase uh, and there you can get that nanoparticles. But all those techniques actually depends on that what type of materials to be converted into its nano size that also uh, important criteria and also other operating uh, parameters to be you know uh, considered and also some optimization condition to be you know uh, followed to you know synthesize this. So as an under, undergraduate you only just know this you know methodology not in detail but you will not have that facility to do that experiment on it. Uh, on it. I think in future those who have that interest on higher studies they may you know learn more about this you know nanoparticle synthesis and then can you can do research on this also. There are several uh, techniques also nowadays coming for synthesis of nanoparticles either by physical or chemical method. So uh, please go through this brief uh, of this you know nanoparticle synthesis by physical method. One or two examples are given here those will be helpful uh, and you please go through again systematically even reference also given here uh, from which that uh, uh, it is taken and uh, please go through this uh, once again in details uh, and you try to understand and have a idea uh, to synthesize that nanoparticles uh, in physical methods. And the next lecture we will try to again uh, uh, discuss uh, uh, briefly about that you know synthesis of nanoparticles by chemical methods. There also we will try to give some examples of that uh, you know synthesis of nanoparticles by chemical methods. So thank you for your uh, kind of attention and uh, have a nice day. Mm -hmm.